Good evening. Call to order the August 2019 Mayor and City Council Workshop for City of Tawingtown. I ask Councilman Hale to lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Hale. Thanks, sir. Start with review of the minutes for our July 8th meeting. If you remember, uh, for those in the gallery in July, we had one meeting as opposed to a separate workshop and voting meeting. Uh, is there any discussion for additions or corrections to the minutes from the July 8th Mayor and Council meeting? No. All right, that shall be up for adoption on Monday night. Uh, next, I'm going to ask if there's any public comment for non-agenda items. Anything that you don't see listed on our agenda for the evening, you're welcome to make a brief comments on. Anyone from the gallery wish to make a comment to the council? Did they let you know that that does not belong to the state? It belongs, okay, it does belong to AT&T, but they have reached out to them. So I can follow up on it and make sure that they um, have in fact contacted them. Thank you, Ms. Edelbrado. Anyone else wish to make any comments? All right, we will move on going to ask each council member if they have any conflicts of interest on any of the agenda items before them this evening. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. All right. Moving on, we're going to head into uh, introduction of some ordinances. Ordinance 08-2019 is a budget amendment for the fiscal year 2019 budget. Uh, Mr. Weiprecht, do you have anything you want to discuss with that before we discuss? I think the treasurer... Um added ex, um, adequate explanation there, but if anyone has questions on it, um, essentially we're correcting uh, monies that were moved related to the uh, park acquisition earlier in the year. And, um, also, we're not having to tap fund balance for the uh, park projects that were not completed in FY19 that we carried over to FY20. So that's kind of the gist of that one. Okay, any discussion or questions from the council? Nope. I will say if you'll pass on to the treasurer that I appreciate the detail that was provided. That was, nice. that was great. Uh, moving on, we're going to have ordinance number 09-2019. Uh, very similar, but it's a budget amendment for the fiscal year 2020 budget. Uh, do you have anything to add, Mr. Weiprecht, before I have the council speak? No, unless there are questions on it. Very good. Any questions from the council on that one? All right, we shall move into what will be up for adoption on Monday night, starting with resolution 2019-10, our monthly water allocations. Uh, is there any discussion from council on the water allocation for August 2019? Just a very small spelling mistake, or not a real punctuation mistake on uh, number five, there's no period on the second page. I don't know whether or not that makes a difference, but. <laughs> if it helps you sleep at night, there shall be a period there. <laughs> Joe, I find typos, not periods. <laughs> All right, moving on from that. Also up for adoption, it's requested that council accept and approve a memorandum of understanding with the Carroll County State's Attorney's Office uh, regarding the inclusion of our police department in their criminal intelligence network. Uh, you had it all in your binders to review. Are there any questions from the council regarding 
this MOU? Uh, three brief things, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to ask uh, Jay if we uh, go ahead with the memorandum of understanding about the intelligence network, are there any policies or procedures or anything that we're going to have to change in order to be in compliance with this? Well, that's, that's a pretty good question there, perceptive, and the fact that right now we do not need to. However, as you realize, we're changing or going through all the police department policies. So there may be a need to put additional policies in place, not to implement this, but to help it run smoothly. We won't know what they are at this point, but not to adopt it now. All right, thank you. Um, number two, I uh, had the occasion to speak with our chief of police, who thinks that this is a very, very good thing, and provided that you know there were no legal concerns, he's in support of this. And the uh, third thing I'll mention very briefly is I did have the chance to speak to Brian D. Leonardo, the state's attorney, who uh, you know says that this is one of the best things we could possibly have, that this is a win-win for everybody, because not only would the information Tawny Town has be sent out to everybody else in the network, but we would also be getting that information back. And that's vital in disrupting, you know, human trafficking, drug trafficking, those kinds of things. And and so it's uh, you know, it's a good thing. Excellent. Did you have a third thing? That was that, that was, was it. That was the third? I lost count. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyone else have any comments or questions regarding the MOU? I did see, I, I can't find it now. I tagged these pages now. I've got to read it again to find it. But I'll let you know. Um, I found a couple of what I thought were typos, but I'll find it. Okay. <laughs> Is this their document or ours? It's theirs. theirs. Okay. Especially if they're typos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else before we move on? All right, that will be up for adoption Monday night. Moving into the city manager report, Mr. Weiprick, do you have anything to give us this evening? I do. Uh, not a whole lot on the updates on the regular chart, but I did want to uh, give a couple follow-ups from the July meeting. Uh, you'll recall that we, you authorized me to uh, approve the electric supplier agreement about that a little bit last month. It does begin when the current agreement ends. So we want to uh, extend our contract from, our current contract ends um, January 2021, so the new one kicks up there and will go to May 2024. So we've locked in a rate of 0.5356 um, cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, the current rate with Potomac Edison is 6.343. So We've, we've got that five cent rate locked in until 2024. So that's the, uh, the end result of the approval that we issued last month. Great. Um, so, and as you may have noticed in last month's um, Department of Public Works report, as Kevin had pointed out, we saved roughly $65,000 a year by purchasing our energy. So, okay. Um, and we're also working to, we have a couple accounts that are, are still with Potomac Edison um, that we're working to switch over to the other provider. Uh, things that, that we've acquired recently, like uh, the last last section of Meadowbrook that we accepted, where then we switched over, you know, the developer had been paying for street lights and things like that. So we still have to switch over Creekside and I think section 4B, or maybe 4A and 4B of Meadowbrook. Um, to the new, um, the new contract, and we're working on that right now. So, okay. Savings to to follow. Um, also, I wanted to follow up on the water meter questions from last month. Yes. Um, I know there was some concern because in June's report uh, we had gone up to 61 no reads on the MXUs from um, 45 in the prior report, and uh, that certainly was good information when that report was generated. Um, but the day after the council meeting, um, we were already down to 46. So what essentially happened is when we read the meters, that's when you're gonna see a spike in the number of no reads. And then right away, we start working towards addressing those that we have no reads. So at that point, right after last month's meeting, we had 16 that were um, on their first notice, which is just on the water bill, 11 that were at the point of the second notice on the water bill, and 19 at the third notice, which is a certified letter that goes to the property owner. 
Um, we, we've got one that's like, it's, it's vacant and we've given them seven notices. So, and the department is not putting the uh, stickers on the doors at this point. Okay. They're finding that, that the, um, the certified letter is usually getting people's attention. Um, so, so those numbers do, are declining and you'll see again in, uh, in Dan's IT report that we're uh, down to 31 at this point, or as of the date of his report. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that because I know there were some concerns expressed last month and um, rather than do it as a memo in case anyone else was interested, I figured I would share that with you tonight. Great. Um, I did want to point out that, and no one questioned it, but um, we did not include the funding for the city manager search on the FY20 budget amendment. Uh, Barry suggested that we, since we're not spending that as a lump sum all in the beginning, that we wait until we get a bit farther into the fiscal year and see see how the the, the ledger the GL lines are are performing and that will give us a better idea where we might be able to either see where we might be seeing more revenue coming in than projected or we're not spending as much. That'll give us a better feel for where we can pull to get that money. So that's why that's not on the FY twenty. Right. I do want to call your attention to in a, there's a memo with with uh, the IT report with regard to uh, social media policy on third party content, and we're going to need to do some additional work regarding records retention and public information act requests and things like that that could pertain to social media um, comments made and things like that because essentially it is a form of communication. So. That's, that's a, a bit of a larger project, but right now, um, Dan provided in, in your packet the language that he would like for us to go ahead and put on our website and the About Us on our Facebook page and things like that so that we have that out there for, should someone go looking for it, we have you know basically our policy on, on comments and you know what's gonna be taken down if it's not appropriate, that sort of thing. So um, I don't know that we need a formal action to approve that, but I think, I think consensus would be sufficient, yes. So I did want to call that to your attention. So Monday night, hopefully, we can get consensus to right. put that out there. Do While we're on that topic, real quick, right. um, if everyone's had a chance to read that social media policy you put together, are there any questions or concerns regarding that before Monday night? Councilman Vigliotti? I just want on the, uh, the second line of the policy where it says user generated posts will be rejected or removed if possible. Uh, should we say if necessary? It's really if possible because there are certain certain times in social media that you can't get rid of a comment. Um, I think the fact that it's being considered would be the if necessary. If it reaches that point, then it's then it is necessary. I, I to be completely honest, I, if I have no problem leaving if possible in there, but I would like to add if necessary either because that would. Th to me, that would be a little more comfortable because if, um, you know, as an example further down, one of the uh, potential items is uh, if a post contains personal identifying information or sensitive personal information. So like if I, for example, am a uh, vendor and I'm going to be at Harvest Fest and uh, I say, hey, you know, come visit my website to see what kinds of products I'm going to have. I mean, that is technically information of a personal nature. Uh, but it's not necessary that that gets taken down, um, at least in my mind, because it's not, I'm sorry. But then it falls under advertises or promotes a commercial product or service or any entity or individual. Okay. Because we don't want the city to be necessarily promoting those in that case. We do have to remain somewhat neutral in those. Right. But, okay, so let me right. take it one step further then. What if it was, say, the event page for Harvest Fest? Right. No, that's entirely different, right? Okay. That's, that's it for me. Thank you. Anything else from Council regarding the social media policy? All right. So Monday night we'll be searching for consensus to have the IT director put that up. Last thing for me, uh, I passed out at the beginning of the meeting a public works agreement addendum for the Tannery Bar project. Uh, as you saw in, in Kay's report that was distributed earlier, uh, there have been some issues with regard to uh, 
the scope of the project changing after the approvals were granted. So we needed to address um, what the developer needs to do uh, to make sure that we end up with the product that is going to work and fits all the required codes, et cetera. So we decided the best way to move forward with that was by doing an addendum to their public works agreement. Uh, the developer is has seen this draft and has already signed their, their version of it, so Monday night we'll be looking to ratify this agreement. So this hopefully will keep the project moving and make sure what they, what they need to deliver in order to get their use and occupancy. Right. And that's it for me. Yep. Any questions for Mr. Weiprecht? On his report or any of the reports? Um, his or any, really. Okay, I just, just one question of clarification. I noticed in uh, Nancy McCormick's economic development report, she states that uh, Harvest Fest is going to be on October 5th, but then uh, Bob's Parks and Rec uh, report says it's going to be on October 12th. And so I was just a little curious for point of clarification which date actually was. Thank you very much, Jim. All right. Anything else from Mr. Weiprick? All right. We kind of covered departmental reports as a part of that. We're going to move on to the legal report. You were all given uh, a draft of the legal report from Mr. Gullo. Uh, Mr. Gullo, do you have anything to add to that? Just so, just a more about the, pol the policy of how we're doing it. Um, it will never be included in your binder packages. So I will try to get it and scan it to you in advance. I was a little hesitant to do it the first time now because it's so easily shared and that's what we had problems before. But it won't be in your binder package, so it'll either be given to you on Wednesday night personally or it'll be emailed to you. And um, everything in here is unfiltered legal advice to you. So as I told you, this is not something that we want to, to publicize uh, because it takes the place of lawyer-client privilege. So. If you have any questions, I, um, I'd be happy to deal with you privately. If you have any general questions on these, we certainly can talk about them. And if we can't, I'll say that. So. Any questions for Mr. Gullo regarding his legal report? All right, very good. Moving into old business, uh, we're looking at capital improvement program for Department of Public Works. Mr. Weiprick, I'm going to ask you to open us up into that for discussions. Ready? So this is, uh, for those of you who were, were on board back in December, uh, just a copy of what we had distributed back then. We have not had an approved public um, capital improvement project for many years. And we have talked about, as I flip through trying to get back to my copy here. We've had some items come up recently that um, may have been possible, either acquisitions, possible acquisitions, or things that we've said, oh, can we, can we spend this money over here instead of, um, for example, we, there was some discussion about when we received the uh, grant for uh, going towards Bollinger Park. You know, that, okay, well, that frees up money that we can do something else. And rather than just try to identify a project to spend the money on, we really need to plan a little longer term than that. So we've been working on a capital improvement program for quite some time, uh, presented it in draft form back in December, and then it kind of sat because the election was coming up and everything. So what you have this month is really the Public Works Department and their list of uh, six-year uh, projects. So FY20 is on here. Um, you only know, as far as the uh, water projects, um, and well, water, sewer, and I believe streets as well, that Roberts Mill Road is on all of those. That was in hopes of us receiving, a, on us receiving grant funding to be able to assist with the water and sewer infrastructure. We, again, did not receive funding on, on that. We applied again this year, um, but we were not high enough in the ranking to, to get any money on that one. So we are um, in the draft sustainable communities. We requested that we expand our boundary to include Robertson Road. Uh, right now, the boundary stops just shy of Robertson Road. 
So the hope is that by including that in the sustainable community area with the state liking to layer all these programs on you know, specific areas, that it may improve our ranking to get that water and sewer grant funding to help us with that project. And again, this is one that we, we don't intend to do unless we can get some help with it. Um, but other items that are on there um, underwater, we've talked about the, uh, you know, this year with doing the, the uh, water tank and stamp pipe rehabilitation. And we're also looking at a possible long-term maintenance agreement um, with a vendor for that that could actually get us a lower upfront cost that would be spread across three years um, with this vendor. And then we could also enter into a longer term year by year contract to maintain the coatings on the tanks and hopefully preserve those coatings for a much longer time period. Um, and we'll have, we'll have a little bit more on that next month. And, um, but again, that's, that's current year, that's FY20 stuff. So getting into future years, um, we'd like to uh, replace uh, telephone lines with, with wireless communication for our well system so that if a phone line goes down, we can still um, operate a well remotely, uh, turn pumps on, and also receive signals if there is a, an alarm going off the well and the phone line is down, we'll still know about it. Um, and also I should point out that I'm just kind of going through the, the spreadsheet part right now, but farther back there's a, a project description and a little bit of a justification for each of these projects. So um, at any rate, um, we can kind of go down the list. We've got things on here out through FY25. Um, again, stand pipe at the west end of the city um, was projected to be done in a couple years. And then also a um, Cal Iron Pipe on Antrim Boulevard. And that will uh, also provide a, a, a looping in the system. That gets redundancy, so if we have a break, we can turn off a section without disturbing, disrupting service to this large. I'm just kind of rolling through these real quickly, just right. to kind of give you a, a, a basic idea. Yep. Um, you know, Roberts Mill, again, you know, we didn't get grant funding for that, so we aren't looking to do that this year, but we'll try again next year. Uh, Windy Hills Pumping Station, um, it, wiring and, and new equipment's needed. That's one of our one of our older stations. That one dates back to uh, like 1988, 89. So there's not a whole lot on sewer and not a whole lot on street. Um, you know, we do a street repair program every year that, that we're able to um, have enough money coming in for the highway user fees. And, and now it looks like, you know, we should be steady on that revenue stream going forward. So we do have some catch up to play on that, but that's not um, broken out here year by year because it, it's kind of based on what we receive through the highway user revenue each year and then what streets are, the streets are evaluated each year and we try to come up with where the most need is you know, based on combination of road condition, uh, how busy the street is, how much travel there is on it, things like that. So that's just a very quick overview. Um, please take a look through there if, if you have questions. Um, we can, we can get some detail, if you need more than what's in there. But this is just kind of the first, first chunk of things. You know, we, we have uh, the same sort of list for, for parks. We have a list for IT. Um, we have a list for the police department. So I'd like to start kind of working through these month by month so that we can get to a point where we can approve a capital improvement program and that's going to be our roadmap for these big expensive projects. So rather than, you know, and, and I understand wanting to have some flexibility if an opportunity arises that is a good opportunity for the city. There's no reason that we can't look at stuff like that. But we also need to focus on, you know, our needs and our ability to complete these projects, you know, that are also need driven. Right. So just kind of setting, setting things up and hopefully we can kind of do a little bite out of each month and you know, if there are questions about a specific project, I can do my best to answer or get the answers for you from Monday night. Great. Council's had a chance to look at these up until today. Are there any questions that have arisen as a result of this? 
Jim, um, certain things are under FY20, 21, 22. Is that the department's kind of um, prioritizing of this? Okay. And if I, uh, if I may, um, are, are these the kind, are, are some of these projects, we're trying, let me phrase it this way, are we trying to um, get grants for all of these projects over the course of each year, or are some of these things things that we'll have to take out loans for to, to help pay for? Or is that all gonna depend on the? That, right, it, yeah. it, it is kind of project by project. I mean, we, we certainly keep an eye out for um, grant opportunities um, periodically. There's, there's low interest financing available through MBE, that, that, we, that that's an avenue that we pursue with some regularity, I guess. Um, but yes, we, we certainly are exploring funding sources for them. And, um, by, by having a, an approved program each year when we, when we develop the budget, we can have these conversations about whether we want to move forward with the projects that we had scheduled for that coming fiscal year. So without having something like this in place, it's, it, it doesn't give us that, that roadmap that we can you know, consult each year with our budget process. Right. And I think that would be very helpful going forward. Um, also, along these lines, should we be um, continuing on the trend we've seen for the last couple years where our financial outlook is improving a little bit you know, each year, we may want to also have some conversations about um, similar to how we did with the water and sewer benefit assessment fees where we set them aside to, to address capital projects. We may want to start setting aside a, you know, a portion of revenue each year to try to build up some savings to address some of these capital projects as we go forward. So, and that, that's something that, you know, may be a luxury we don't have right now, but if, you know, if we continue on the trend that we're seeing right now, we may have the opportunity to set aside some, some money each year towards these projects, um, aside from things like the, the benefit assessments that were, or the uh, parking impact fees, things that kind of automatically go towards that. So. All right. Thank you, Jim. Any additional questions from council regarding the capital improvement program for public works? All right, so Jim, if you can just clarify for Monday, what sort of direction are you seeking from council? Just, uh, we're not at a point to look for approval for anything. Um, you know, if, if they're, ultimately, what, it, what we'll do is compile all of these projects into a, you know, master CIP. And at that point, we will look for approval for that, that, that program. So as we go through month by month, you know, if there are if there are projects that that mayor and council would like to see, uh, you know, within that six year window that are not listed, this will be the opportunity to you know bring them to our attention to see you know staff can explore them a little bit and give some feedback on you know here's why it's not in the six year or gee we didn't realize that was the priority that you think it is and you know. Now's the time to have those conversations. Right. I think the one thing I would have expected to see on here was the replacement of their facilities at Memorial Park, a new building for them to work out of. That is, um, yeah, that was in the longer range, and I did not put this in your, in your packet because this is um, a, a very long range projection, but um, that was kind of scheduled to be. I think it was like out in fiscal year 30 or something along those lines um, to do a, a new pub public workshop. Um, let's see. Actually, FY25 is when they originally had kind of slated that. So not too far down the road. Right. Um, and there is something that, um, <clears throat> That'll be for another month. It was a parks project or something that um, didn't make the initial six year that kind of surprised me. So, okay. But, um, but again, if there are, you know, I did did double check with the uh, public works director today and just to make sure that, you know, he didn't think of any changes since the last time we spoke about this back in the winter. 
and he was comfortable with the you know the six year list that we had put together. So Okay. We're good. So council just kinda of take this on their advisement. You're gonna be seeing these probably each month for the next few months. Um, until they're all compiled and in the meantime if you come up with anything that you'd like to see or you're wondering why it's not there feel free to direct that to uh, Mr. Wyprick he can check with department heads and get answers for you um, and you have another chance Monday night to discuss this as well if anything comes up <clears throat> all right moving into new business we're going to start with our monthly fi monthly financial report do we have any questions from the council regarding our monthly financial report? Very good. You'll see on your desk there is a slight correction to what was included in your packet. The header was incorrect. It showed the wrong dates for the FY20 graphs. So just keep that in mind. You can replace what's in your binder with that one. After that, we have our accounts payables. Are there any questions on the accounts payables? All right, hearing none, we're gonna move on. Uh, next, we have our town county agreement. Uh, something we do every year, the way that we agree with the county on how, uh, how taxes are charged and collected and brought back to us as well as, as well as other projects. I believe the only difference this year is simply the figures inside. All the other things have remained the same. Um, Mr. Weiprick, do you have anything to add to this? Not unless there are questions on it. Very good. Mr. Guller, from legal standpoint, do you have anything to add to this one? Exactly the same as yeah. the other. Great. And Council, do you have any questions regarding this year's town county agreement? is kind of the first one that our newer well you've seen them in the past but councilman haynes is kind of the first one you've seen um if you do have questions on this it's a regular yearly thing that we do yeah uh, <clears throat> just let us know and we it's the first one i've seen from the hot seat from the hot seat exactly <laughs> um all right moving forward we have i guess a memo from cdm smith regarding the roberts mill stormwater construction services <clears throat> you want to throw us into that mr weiprick sure Great. um we are recommending that CDM Smith be our inspection engineer for the O'Brien Avenue Bridge project, um, as well as the portions of the Roberts Mill Run stormwater retrofit. Uh, there are going to be some sewer line relocations and versions as a result of that project. And CDM Smith is very familiar with our, our public works infrastructure, so they are very well positioned to be our inspector on those projects. And they do have a uh, CDM Smith is, is large enough that they do have expertise in transportation as well as the things that we typically deal with them on, which is largely water and sewer. But for example, with this project, they brought in um, somebody from their transportation office in Harrisburg who attended the uh, pre-construction meeting for O'Brien Avenue Bridge with us and will be our, our point person for the, um, for the inspection services on the bridge. So we would like to uh, have your approval Monday night to execute that agreement. All right. And I find it's important that we have our own inspectors there for this project since the bridge is becoming ours after the project is complete. And we want to make sure that it's able to, uh, that it's built to the standards that we need it to be for our maintenance. Uh, are there any questions regarding that from council? That will be up for approval on Monday night as well. Uh, let's see, number five, new business. We have appointment of police chief, and I'll throw that one off here. Um, kick that one off, I guess, a better way. Last couple of months, I've spent a significant amount of time at the police department talking to Lieutenant Etzler. I've met with every single police officer in our department, rode around with them in, rode around with them in their cars, discussed the state of the department, uh, got an idea of you know where they come from, what their plans are, things like that. Um, talked to Lieutenant Etzler, kind of getting an idea of what he's accomplished in the six months that he's been the acting police chief. Um, getting an idea of what his vision is for the city. And I have found from those conversations that I'm confident in nominating him as our police chief. And so Monday night I will be asking for the council's approval of that nomination. 
and I'd like to open it up to discussion from the council. I think we're just going to do this in an orderly fashion because I know everyone has kind of something to say about it. Uh, so we'll start with Councilman Haynes. Do you have anything you'd like to, to say regarding the nomination? Um, some, something I understand is that this is well within the role of the mayor to do. So if you wanted to evoke a process, uh, obviously you would have wanted to do that. And I think we've had time so far, and so with uh, former chief sentencing coming up here soon, um, I, I guess there's a desire to stabilize the department. So, you know, it's well within your authority to nominate, and if you're going to put up someone who I consider to be an objectively qualified candidate, then I do understand that that's your decision. Councilman Hale, would you like to speak to it? I think uh, Chief, uh, Acting Chief Hester would be a great permanent chief. Um, we've invested a lot of time, so has he, his career here. Um, in fact, August 19th celebrates the 17th year of the city. It's a long time. It's a hard to keep at that level um, uh, the good graces of a body of government as well as your fellow police officers. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's a great, great decision. Thank you. Mayor Pertum Foster. Um, like uh, Councilman Haynes, I realize that this is in, within your purview to do. What I do disagree with is uh, the process or lack thereof in uh, the selection. I feel as though this uh, appointment should have been um, advertise and put out and um, others should have been considered as well as uh, Lieutenant Etzler. So um, I'd just like to go on record to say I disagree with the process, okay. like I said, or the lack thereof. There was no process. It's just plain old your decision. Thank you. Councilman Vigliotti. Uh, yeah, I, uh, if I could request a couple of minutes, I've actually prepared something in writing because I want to make sure that, that I'm very, you know, six, and I want to make sure that I'm full in the depth of the explanation. I would expect nothing less of you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I am in support of the nomination of Lieutenant Etzler to be permanent chief. Uh, and, you know, part of the reason why I want to read this is because I want to make sure I hit all of those major reasons so that I don't forget anything. Um, so, so to begin with, you know, uh, Lieutenant Etzler stepped into the breach after the January incident when no one else did. He didn't have to, and we would have been forced to scramble to find someone if he didn't. But Etzler stepped up and he took command. He helped the mayor and council guide the department through what is arguably the most trying period in its history. Every step of the way, he professionally carried out every task or directive ordered by the mayor and council. The list of such changes, accomplishments, and goals already met even as acting chief is immense. And uh, you'll remember back in the winter, I requested that uh, Lieutenant Etzler provide us with a list of some of those accomplishments. And for this evening, and anybody who wants a copy of this can have it, he's provided me with an updated list of even more of those accomplishments. Um, so in addition to that, um, the mayor and council ordered an investigation to be conducted into the events surrounding the January incident by multiple independent and outside agencies and personnel. All of them objectively cleared Etzler of any wrongdoing or any involvement. Etzler was also commended for his cooperation, openness, and willingness to fix what was immediately needed. And in reference to that, everybody will have received a copy of that investigative report. Um, and I think we certainly have to take that into account in this consideration. Now, Etzler has continued to make progress since, including on recommendations from that report, and he intends to do more. So I want to uh, take a little bit of a different tack now. I, uh, one of the most valuable things I own, I brought with me tonight. It's a uh, book format of a thesis called The Profile of the Policeman. And this was actually written by my great grandfather who was a New York City police officer who worked the beat in the Bronx. And he worked his way up to becoming a captain. And uh, later in his life, he decided he wanted to go to college. And he pursued a master's degree in public administration. And so naturally, he uh, decided that his thesis was going to be about policing. And uh, 
Basically, the thesis examines perceptions about policing and studies the traits and characters of policemen and was composed to assist departments in the recruiting and hiring process. And my uh, grandma has told me that a number of agencies did end up using his process for that. So in, uh, in the thesis, he states, quote, police officers, as a result of experience and success on the job, know what qualities are actually required to render police services to their communities. So consider for the moment the hiring of a new chief, or as my great grandfather would call him, a neophyte to a community. And I quote, it is essential to know exactly what the preconceptions of both the community and the neophyte are. If the difference is too wide, community dissatisfaction with the police service rendered and occupational dissatisfaction on the part of the police will eventually result. In other words, you don't want there to be a gulf between the police department and the public. So that brings us to the letter of support for Etzler from all non-administrative officers in the department that we all received this winter. I have that here tonight, so if we need to make copies, if anybody wants to be refreshed on this, and I know this, I think this was before you guys were on, right? So I can have copies made of this if, if you want that as well. Um, and as Mayor Wentz noted, he personally interviewed every single signatory of that letter and found that their opinion in support of Etzler remained the same. Those officers know that Etzler will help them render services to the community and will enable their further success. As they wrote from their letter, quote, we have the utmost confidence in Lieutenant Etzler's ability as a police administrator, and that, quote, he is the right person for the permanent chief of police position, and that, quote, he will be able to lead the department effectively to serve and protect the citizens of Tawnytown. And these are the officers who are out there every day. They know what they need to get the job done. These are the people who consistently put us in the top 10 safest cities in the state, most usually in second place. These men are telling us what they need to do that. To command men whom you're going to ask to put their lives on the line, you need their trust and support. Our officers trust Etzler. I think it can be argued that most residents love our officers as well as Etzler. I think it can also therein be argued that the department has never been more popular or well received among citizens. And for that, I would direct you to the interactions both online and in person between the police and the community and to look at the kind of community response that something like National Night Out last night receives. In this day and age, such trust, such faith is both rare and crucial. Consider the trust and support of a Napoleon or a Reagan versus New York's present mayor and the gulf that exists between the public, the police, and the administration. You need trust, not a gulf for success. Our placing trust in officers who so much of the public trusts and a man in whom the officers trust will strengthen the trust in turn that those officers and the public have in us as elected leaders. Public safety so very heavily depends on a good relationship between citizens, law enforcement officers, and elected officials. We are all part of a symbiotic process, and we want that process to lead to success. Tonight, we consider the chief as an integral element. I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> in the chief's position in this instance, you need someone who knows the city. Main roads, neighborhoods, side streets, alleys, you need someone who has actually worked out on that street, knows the residents, knows who they are as human beings, and who knows our history. You need someone who is responsible to civilian leadership and to the community, who knows protocols, procedures, and who maintains absolute professionalism in every respect. You need a chief, above all, who knows his officers. We cannot act in this instance on an a priori assumption about who could come in. By every measurable, every measurable degree, the evidence, objective, subjective, and personal, demonstrates Etzler is, already as our officers have noted, the right man for the job. And so because of this, Etzler will have my support on Monday night. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Fuller, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, I would like to switch chairs with Joe. <laughs> Mr. You hate following I him, hate don't following you? Joe. I was gonna say, you said that before. <laughs> I know, this is the second time. Um, I'm just gonna go with, with Daniel and, and Diane said, I like Etzler. I'm not saying he can't do the job, but I kind of see it as a, a little bit of a slap in the face to Jim for doing one thing for him and something else for a different department. So, yeah, you know, it wouldn't have hurt to put it out there and make some comparisons. Very good. Anything in wrap up for anybody or are we, okay. <clears throat> if you'd like to discuss it prior to Monday, I'm more than happy to take 
things from Jim Weiprecht right now. What would you like to say, Jim? I'd just like to add something before you move on. Um, Great. I appreciate the support that, that was given last month from everyone, uh, but I will ask, please don't use the city manager process to influence your decision with regard to the police chief. Um, I think that the police chief position, there's a more immediate need to fill that vacancy. Uh, not having a permanent chief is having an effect on our ability to recruit new officers. We are very short staffed in the department. It's difficult for the guys to take vacation days, to use their floating holidays, there's overtime, and we can't let this drag on indefinitely. It's a different situation than the city manager. Would I love a decision to be made on this role? Sure, but in the best interest of the city, we can't let the police chief drag out. We need to make a decision and we need to turn the reins over permanently to Etzler. So he's been doing a great job and we just need to be done with it so that the department can get, get back to normal and start you know, replenishing the ranks and the guys will be able to take some vacation time and even that's gonna take a very long time. It's a long process to bring in an officer. So the sooner we get the chief's position nailed down, the better, so. I thank you. That, Jim. I thank didn't you, realize Jim. that there was any issues. I don't think we've been informed of that part. I appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to discuss before Monday, I'm available. Um, I'll be happy to sit down with you, discuss further if you wish. Um, but Monday night, I will be making that official nomination, and I'll be seeking your support for that. If I could just really briefly say, Jim, your class and your honor really are humbling, and that's yes. just yeah. it's humbling. Your brief statement put his six minutes to shame. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Uh, under new business, we have a fee schedule addition. Uh, what you have in your packets is a list of our fee schedule. I believe, Mr. Wiper, correct me if I'm wrong, what's being added is a water hydrant usage fee. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, there's, we can make the one change or we. This is, this is what we're charging currently. Uh, the fact that it's not formally on the fee schedule is really not a problem. This would just help clarify things for the limited amount of hydrant usage we do have. But if there are other changes to the fee schedule that you would like to see to do it uh, really by the book, we would introduce and pass a resolution to adopt a, an amended fee schedule. So if, if just the water the hydrant usage is the only thing that you think warrants being changed to the schedule. We can just go with that. But now would also be the opportunity if there are other fees that, that we think are you know not in line. Right. And I think that's going to take a little more time than we have to really right. determine those. So yes. really what I'm seeking Monday is that we, we amend our fee schedule to add the water hydrant usage fee. And then there's no harm in kind of just amending this as we come to the new fees as we determine what's appropriate and what's not. Um, so Monday night, that's what we'll be looking for. Are there any questions regarding that amendment to the fee schedule? Yeah, I guess just for me, just a little, I guess, more explanation about why the water hydrant fee is showing up now, because I'm just a little curious, that's all. I'm sorry. No problem. We have, um, we have a, a water meter that will go on a hydrant that typically, the, when it's used, it's usually by a developer who has uh, landscaping. They want to irrigate in a you know a new subdivision or things of that nature. So since the water is not uh, in those situations, the water is not going to the wastewater treatment plant. It's usually you know filling a swimming pool is something that that has been done in the past. We're kind of trying to shy away from that uh, because. There are different scenarios. We've we've filled pools, for example, like at Carol Vista, we've filled their pool from a hydrant in years past. But we spend several hours doing that because the nearest hydrant is quite a distance from the swimming pool. Right. And that's taken a few man hours to do that each time. So we've we've you know suggested in internal talks we've talked about well should we also be including man hours if we're you know providing this service and if we started doing that 
it then becomes cheaper just to hire the tanker truck to come in and fill your pool. But we do have developers that use hydrants periodically, and this is the rate that we've charged them. But just for clarification, um, you know, it would be helpful to have it on the fee schedule so that people would know up front that, you know, here's what it's going to cost you if you do use the hydrant. And it just makes it, it gives it a little more credibility. We, we haven't had any real issues with it, but if it's on the fee schedule, we can say it was officially adopted on this date. Right. Uh, just, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, putting the period behind number five. That right. <laughs> um, you you kind of spoke to a question that I was going to have for you is, are there other fees like a flat fee to hook them up to the hydrant or anything like that that we do charge or we should charge for that? We have not charged anything like that in the past. Okay. And, um, as I said, we've, in just conversations with myself and the public works director, it, we're, we're trying to get away from that, like the pool filling. Right. Because it, 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 it could be different in every scenario. And, mm -hmm. you know, you might have one pool that's got a hydrant right outside, you know, where they just hook up one length of hose and they're done. It's pretty easy. Then there's like one more like the Carol Vista where it's a much bigger effort and you're not charging you know, based on the service that's provided really. So we may try to get away from that in general and just leave it to, you know, here's the meter, you sign for it. If the meter's damaged, you're responsible. And, you know, it, it goes out to with the utility contractor who really knows how to use it and how to hook it up and how to turn the hydrant on and off, things like that. So okay. there, there's a little more we'd like to kind of flesh out internally um, but again you know hydrant usage is it, it is done periodically right right okay any other questions regarding the amendment to the fee schedule all right I do want to mention for October I'd like the council to consider rescheduling the date of our October meeting because it does uh, conflict with the MML fall conference. Uh, as of right now, I believe our October meeting is the 14th that Monday and the fall conference runs from the 13th through the 15th. I believe the majority of us anticipate attending that conference. Uh, so just kind of keep in mind before Monday, I'd like to get this nailed down. Uh, this month, how we're going to schedule our meetings in October. Um, Mr. Weiprick, you did have some information here from Souls. Is that just answers to questions from last month? Do we need to address that at all? I, I think uh, after the presentation last month, uh, Council requested uh, a little more detail and a copy of the concept that was presented. So that's, that's all that that is. It's, it's essentially just uh, bullet points regarding what was presented last month. Um, Perfect. All right, any other new business the council would like to bring forward? All right, with that, we'll move into public comment for agenda items. Anything that was on the agenda that you heard us discuss this evening, we'll be happy to receive your comments on those things. Would anyone from the gallery like to comment? Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Would anyone else like to 
make any comments to the council regarding agenda items. Ms. Hildebrido again. Thank you, Ms. Hildebrido. Anything else from, from the gallery? Thank you, sir. Anyone else have anything to add? All right, with nothing more, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Thank you, council, for your evening. <laughs>